shown to you in the physical universe. If they do, if one day physics finds a use for them, that's great. But if not, that's great too.
Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Hopefully people can hear me this time. Hello. <laughs> is there sound? Do we have We'll sound? do the sound check because this is how we like to start off the stream. Can you hear us, everybody? Please say yes. Please say yes. Woo! That worked fine. Woohoo! <laughs> OBS is working this time. <sighs> yes. Oh, how's it going, everybody? How are you all doing on this fine Wednesday in December? This year is almost over. We've got, what, three weeks? Three weeks left? Something like that. Of 2020? Of yeah. three weeks left of 2020. I, I don't think it can end soon enough. I, yeah. <laughs> three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have hey, King. ten more work days this year. That's 10 it. more work days. I think I've got around the same too. I'm working up until around Christmas and then Yeah. I haven't taken I haven't taken a lot of time off. So I'll be having a nice little good Christmas New Year's. That's what yeah. I I we I decided to to, to close the tap room between uh, Christmas and New Year's. So if you nice. want to work, if you don't want to use the vacation days, um you can still work. You just there just won't be any interfacing with clients. So you can, you know, stay heads down and, and get some good yeah. work done. But won't a force vast majority, you to stop working. But yeah, I yeah. can't force you to use your vacation days. So oh. if you don't want to use them, you don't have to use them, but most people are going to be using them. So Shopify is very much like you got to take the time off. Yeah. <laughs> it's like um but then the vacation days are always kind of fuzzy. So it's it's like you take it off and then we'll talk about the other vacation. <laughs> day. Fair enough. Next year or wh however, especially because it's the end. It's like it's the end of the year. So your vacation kind of renews right after this. And it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. Just, just take the end of the year off. Yeah. All right. Uh, so what are we talking about today? Oh, uh, yes. So um, we're back at it. Uh, you know, Kelly plus Kelly. We like to talk about themes. Uh, we... We're supposed to talk about this last week, but for those who joined us early, you may have noticed that things were pretty quiet uh, <laughs> for the first 10 minutes. Um, and this one really stumped me. I have not been stumped like this, I think, well, since maybe one of the first episodes that we hosted where at least things worked out of the gate, but it just then went things downhill would crash. From there. And, and then, I, yeah, things crashed and then I'd be stumped. Um, so what we're talking about today is going to be linting uh, because we started talking about linting what feels like a millennium ago. Uh, it would have been two streams ago that we started talking about linting after we we we, we touched on or we talked about versioning and then we got into linting um, and just kind of started that. So want to get a bit more into that and um, and that kind of leads nicely into continuous integration because. It's nice to have linting that runs automatically. It's nice to have lots of things that run automatically. Automatic is good. It's uh yeah, you the less the less you have to do manually, the less you have to remember to do things, I guess. That's it's just the life of a dev is like if if you could make a master checklist and have it always up to date with all the things that you have to do, um it's a very the more long you can list. remove out of that checklist. Yeah. Your, regular development tasks not better. that i ever forget anything like i never make any mistakes so no 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 but for everybody no, I else always i always get all of my tasks done um always from, yeah yeah no <laughs> all right i'm looking at the chat um hey code brother we've got uh sh sure she sure hey um <laughs> struggling sure sure <laughs> Yeah. Sure. Um, thank you, Jonas, for for doing the sound check and Haguna Haguna Matata, and of course King King is our most regular. We, we we need to we need to figure out a rewards. Well, I mean, we're supposed to have shoppypoints.com at one point. That's what we're developing on. So yes, King, will you will there. be you'll get some shopping points somehow for uh, for your re rate of return. I'd say and and active participation. It's good to see you again. Um, <laughs> King. What? Oh. Wait, is there audio issues again? I just heard Thomas say he always gets all his work done. All his work done, yeah. <laughs> and for cracking good jokes. There we ah, go. Thank you for letting me know that that still requires credentials. I am going to fix it right now. Um, oh, cool. Okay. 
Uh, you here? Why don't you do that, and I'll present. I'll we can transfer into our first segment of what's new at Shopify. There we go. We need a little like Wayne's oh, World, oh, 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 like oh. Wayne's World, Wayne's, you know, like, <laughs> what's new at Shopify. Um, uh, cool. Okay, let me switch over speaker to presentation. Settings. There we go. Okay, uh, what's new at Shopify? Uh, effective this morning, uh, or I mean, you may have seen it in the API before, but we put the change log out as of this morning. Uh, there is a new proxy script, uh, proxy feature for the script tag API. So, few pieces of context to fill in here. Uh, the script tag API. Uh, if for those who don't or who don't know it or are not familiar with it, is an API that allows apps, um, or I mean, it doesn't have to be just apps, but allows you to register a JavaScript file to be loaded in a particular storefront. Uh, so, typical use case is an app, an app that integrates with storefront. They say, "Hey, I want to include this JavaScript. Uh, it's part of my app. I need it to load on the page." Let me register this script, um, and automatically it gets included in the store. That's kind of Shopify's responsibility. Problem with this API has been that the script that you provide has to be hosted by you or um, on a service of some sort and not Shopify's uh, service. So because this is being hosted on another service, Ultimately, the to get this script, it's got to do typically like a DNS lookup, and you have to connect to another server while the page is loading, and it just it slows things down because it's it's on another uh, domain. So what this provides uh, for for developers is that instead of the script being served from your remote service, ultimately it can now be served from Shopify CDNs. Uh, you the uh, um, like hundred percent of times a connection will already be established to the Shopify CDN .shopify .com. There's a there's CDN CDN .shopify .com. Um, I believe there's a few of these CDN domains that I always get mixed up. Um, point is is that connection will already be established and these scripts can be downloaded super fast. Any 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 questions? Any uh. Any comments? Anyone familiar with Script Tag API? Uh, does this, does this, uh, do I get any like yays from anyone who's been wanting this for a while? I know a few people. Uh, is the CDN powered by Fastly? Uh, yes and no. Uh, it depends on where you are. So we are not solely dependent on one CDN. I think we're up to three now. Huh. Um, so it's, uh, but yeah, Fastly is one of them. And I believe Fastly is North America. So if you are in North America, then it's being served by Fastly. Uh, yes, we can have script tags we would love to use. Can I use the script tag to load a JS inside checkout? Uh, I don't think so. Wait, there is a new scope order status. Uh, yeah, OK, so here. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't even show the new cache parameter. OK. So to enable this being served from the CDN, you just need to include when you add this script, cache property, set it to true. By default, it's false because we can't just instantly start serving all these scripts uh, from the CDN. So it's it's kind of a progressive future-facing change that um, you'll have to just set cache to true. Uh, the question on can you load JS inside checkout? Uh, I do see this order status display scope. So in the order status page? Yes, um, I'm not nearly as familiar with checkout as I am with storefront. So I would ask if anyone else in the audience knows this. Kelly, if you know this, I don't know. If... I do not know this. Also, I didn't no. hear the question. So, um, can you use script tags API for the inside the checkout? Um, no. I don't think you can. Yeah, I just see the order status uh, page. All right, I just kind of um, updated the build process uh, that file with two public gists. Please let me know if you can access those now. Uh, free Shopify store consult. Any news on the sections API? We were going to use the sections API to load these scripts. Do we not need to do that anymore? Uh, free Shopify store consult. What do you mean by sections API? Do you mean sections like the, everywhere? Yeah, Wait, I think we need it's to get... like the uh, app sections. 
app sections. Oh yeah. I okay. mean, that's my guess. I could be wrong. Um, can wait. I'll, I'll I'll start answering an assumption. Yes. Wait. App sections. Cool. Um, app sections. I I need I need I think we I need to get to like a pre-recorded uh, or like <laughs> once per stream. Uh, when is sections everywhere launching? Related question. Um, when is it launching? So yeah, it's uh. It, it will launch. <laughs> a good There's things another, come with time. <laughs> good things come with time. There's been another um, review of it, and it's it's being worked on. Uh, but in I can say uh, now more than ever, the idea of having a proper developer preview, making it early is making it available as early as possible for developers to start building on. Um, is is a big priority for me and in, in, in my involvement in it. I um but to do that, we need to just make sure that at the at the the fundamental layer that things won't change. Uh, because we don't want a full repeat of last spring of fully yeah. like pulling back the developer preview. So it's it's been a it's been a ride. Um appreciate the patience for those who have been following along. I know it's uh it's if it's if you feel frustrated about it, uh, I can assure you that um, internally, it's been a, a ride as well. Uh, I can say that as a partner, like I am eager to have access to sections everywhere as well. But the worst thing that could happen is something releases that is released that's half baked and completely breaks our entire build flow. So yeah. I would rather have I would rather have it have everything that we need in order to be successful as an agency and not hinder the app develop or the, the theme development experience for our merchants. And already I can say that what's changed since um, the initial dev preview launch to where it was at um, or where it is now is it's going to be so much easier to migrate any existing themes that you have to this new sections everywhere paradigm. Um, awesome. That yeah. Whereas before, for those who who saw the dev preview docs from last spring, it it was a full it was a whole thing. rearchitecture, full rebuild. Um, if you want to be serving sections everywhere themes, it was a full, um, like restart on your theme development. Uh, this is this is more eloquent. point. We want to get something out. Like good things come with time. Yeah. All right. What do you cool. say we talk about linting? Let's talk about linting uh da, da, da. so here we go um so for those of you that remember two streams ago we had opened a pr called ad es lint uh try out github discussions what's that discussions I was wondering the same thing discussions a lot so this might this is a beta feature this might just be I, i'm curious if other people have seen this i saw it on my end as well Cool. Discussions allow community members to start conversations and ask questions without opening oh, issues. Oh, that's <gasps> awesome. Okay. Love that's that. That's so cool. Because I've wanted to, like, I want to be able to reference code, like a PR, and be like, hey, what's up with this line of code? Or like, what's up with this thing here? And just like, talk about it. Also for like future future topics and everything, being able to use discussions instead of have a have a pull request be open to suggest an episode topic. Yeah, because it's it, yeah, just keeping discussion. Oh wow, okay, great. Cool. I'm gonna have to follow up on that after. Um, okay, back to it. Uh, so we opened this PR last time. Adius Lint. Uh, I think I got one commit uh, config ES Lint for scripts. So. I came in uh, since the last stream and I finished this up. Uh, so what we have here is I've just, we've got a application JS file, uh, really basic. Actually here, let me open this in my code editor so we don't use, yeah, oh no, let's, let's uh, maybe the diff is nice. No, okay, let's do that. Let's do the code editor. Code editor, okay. Da, da, da. <sighs> cool. So for linting. Um, what we have is we have our package JSON script, lint.js, that's just going to run ESLint. Uh, we have our ESLint config. I went with putting it in the package JSON this time, just trying okay. something new. Um, so at its core, we've got the extends plugin at Shopify 
slash ESNext. Um, so that is the Shopify ESLint plugin, which we can see here. Uh, that is the same rules that Shopify uses for its JavaScript code base. So the same linting rules um, that it uses for its uh, code base is available publicly. Uh, and you can install it at, at Shopify slash ESLint plugin. Uh, there's an NPM page. Um, Kelly, do you mind sharing that link? The uh, If you just search like NPM yeah. Shopify ESLint plugin, you could share that. Um, so at its core, this is what's doing all of our linting. Everything else here is actually just a kind of, I don't want to say hack, but a ESLint doesn't support yet these top level awaits that we were doing, uh, which are really nice to work with because here we've got theme kit command. So we were running theme kit deploy and we want it's asynchronous. So this returns a promise and we want to wait for that promise to be done. Uh, and top level awaits are just, they're, they're nice to work with and they're only available right now in node 14 and up. Um, and ESLint has not uh, adopted it yet. It's not compatible yet with ESLint. Um, there's an issue open. I didn't store it. Uh, just have to take my word for it. So the workaround for it is you have to pull in Babel ESLint parser. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Babel or Babel, that's the first thing you're always going to ask yourself. How do I say it? Is it Babel <laughs> or Babel? Kelly, how do you say it? Babel. <laughs> Babel? Yeah, I say Babel. And actually, there's a new uh, there's a new app or there's a new app called Babel. Uh, I think it's like a language learning app, kind of like Duolingo. And there's an advertisement for it, and they say Babel. So I'm like, okay, Babel. Yeah. Maybe so that. I don't know if you remember this, but there used to be something called Alta Vista, and they Did had a chat. Alta Vista. That... No, it was like a like a oh. like a search service. I think I, don't, I actually don't exactly remember, but um, they had a service called Babelfish, which was a like one of the first online translation services. Like, ah. yeah. So that's how I, I learned about. I Babel. remember the term Alta Vista, but now it, like that's a fuzzy '90s. Was it late '90s or I don't? Yeah, yeah it, it was, was fuzzy. Yeah, it was. Uh, a while ago that it was released. Apparently they changed the domain. Yeah, getting it started in 1997. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, I was just just a wee lad, just a wee lad in 97. Alta Vista was the original search engine. Google killed it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that was, uh, I was using a computer by then. I, I was, I remember uh, we got our first computer when I was four years old in... 1994 um and yeah i was on the web by then i was playing uh putt putt and uh magic school bus but wasn't using alta vista maybe i, I was uh, yeah i was using alta well when it came out i was using it just because i was i grew up around computers my my dad was a cobalt programmer for a while and my mom would build uh -huh. and fix computers so i learned how to turn on and off a computer before i learned how to write uh, so my my entry was my aunt worked at microsoft huh. and she would send us every Christmas a box full of Microsoft video games. I love that. Um, that was the like coolest ant ever move. Google has killed more of its own products than search engines at this point. Yeah. So if you're unfamiliar <laughs> with the beautiful service called killedbygoogle.com. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't know about this. Oh, yes. Wait, let me pull this up. Uh... <laughs> Wait. Oh, wait. What am I doing? What are you doing? Uh, what's going on here? This is uh, no, I don't want that. Sorry. I've got stuff popping up over my Okay. I clicked the link in uh in my stream machine. There we go. Kill by Google. Is Angular JS dead? Wait. Well, it's no longer Angular JS. It's Angular. Oh, okay. So it's I just... think they had killed the OG Angular JS, but Angular is still around. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say because it, it was kind of like I don't, for for a while there it was Polymer versus Angular, and they were like just having an internal kind of yeah. It looked like Angular kind of came out. Rip um, Google on Hangouts. Top, or I mean, Polymer ended up being just going web standards. Uh, different different approaches. 
Google Hangouts. Google Cloud Prince, Google Play Music. Oh, all of my favorites. I was Where's a Google the, Play uh, Music user. What are you looking for? Uh, the social the social network. Um, oh, Google Plus. Google Plus. Oh my God. Look at this list. Yeah. Wow. And, you, and there are so many things that are just killed um, before like you even learn about it. So. I mean, it's it's good. Like I, that's the beauty of software. You know, it, it's it's like I, I I'm I'm happy there's not maybe a sunk cost fallacy uh, bias going on at Google. Maybe at the they, same time, though, things. I feel like they get shiny object syndrome and get bored of what they've been working on. Like Google <laughs> Fiber. True. I don't know if you I know mean, this, but Google Fiber is in, in like in process of being sold. Like they're accepting bids oh, really? to buy out Google Fiber. So like Comcast and AT and T are both bidding on it. It's it's hot. like I I feel like it it's, it happens at Shopify too, um, especially with developer uh, tooling. And I'm not gonna I don't mean Slate, but I'm just like in general with uh, like there was a really cool app, um, a way to populate your store yes. with data that came out like three years ago that was really cool. I still and have it, the ball of yarn on my store. Fred. Which now it's it's available in the Shopify app CLI. So it kind of came back uh, okay. in, in another way. So you can populate your store uh, with the Shopify app CLI. Um, but yeah, there is, there's kind of a history of, of putting stuff out and then, um, I mean, developer as a like developer teams, you gotta you go on to the next thing and then maintenance is comes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Anyway, okay, let's get back, back to, to it. linting. Back to linting. Um, so I was saying, uh, Babel. We need Babel here. Uh, ideally, we we don't we don't really want this. This is just complexity in my eyes. Um, it's really we're just doing it for this Babel syntax top level await uh, because ESLint doesn't uh, support it. There is an issue open in ESLint. Uh, so as soon as it does get added to ESLint, we can just remove all of this stuff. We don't cool. need that. And this is, again, really just to lint um, these scripts that we had started. So using uh, Node Theme Kit, we want to just make sure uh, if we're making any more scripts that the this JS stays nice and pretty and linted. Uh, cool. So let's give it a shot here. Let me clear out my command line. So if I do npm run lint, I think I can lint JS. Running lint. Uh oh. Oh, uh, uh, we got linting errors. Okay, so uh, we have some JS here that uh, is not written up to our specs or to Shopify's ESLint specs. Um, I may have done this on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> have something of to talk about. Of course, they did it on purpose. It's not like you perfectly wrote this and you know made a mistake here. No, I never make mistakes. Huh. <laughs> Um, so actually before I go to fixing these, um, this is so, so what I just showed running linting in the command line is one way that you run linting. Do you ever run it this way, Kelly? Do you ever use linting this way? Um, I, well, I usually have like a, it's linting on save. Linting on save. Yeah. So I have a whole like problems, uh, like that problems tab, it, it yells at me when I, I'm doing something problems incorrect. tab. So you use maybe the VS code ESLint plugin? I do. Yes. Ah, yeah. It is so, a beautiful thing. Yes. So this is kind of uh so so I, I I ran the linting in command line just to be like, so this is at its core. This is how it works. Um and this is handy. And actually this will be useful when we get to talking about CI. But uh for most people when they're working. Uh, with ESLint, it's kind of nice to have that. Like, why is it all the way? I can't point on my screen. Why is it all yeah. the way? Oh, I can point on the. Uh, yeah. Okay. There. Why is it all the way down here? Why can't it be up here where your actual code is? I don't know where I, you're actually pointing to. I'm pointing to oh. on my on my screen preview. I'm pointing at my terminal right here. Okay. There we go. And then I'm pointing up to my code up there. Why? <laughs> why don't we have the errors up there? <laughs> That is a very uh, good question. What can we yeah, do about this? Uh, let's 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 take care of that. So uh let's install the ESLint plugin right here. I think I already have it, but I don't have it enabled. Um so let me enable it. Right here. Cool. 
And I know there's some settings that you can set so it does auto fixing as well. Let's skip that. Yeah. Um, here. So let me keep this open. So what we want to set up, what's really nice with the Lint, uh, there's settings that so it does auto fixes uh, on save or like even better than telling you there's an error or that they're like you wrote your JavaScript in a, in a wrong way is just like it just fixes just it fixes it for you. This is especially useful for proper spacing, uh, semicolons based on however you define your your rules. And again, this is opinionated, so you can choose you set the you set the settings of how you want it to actually compile. Which is so, always fun when I work in different projects with different developers and they have different rules. So to get to the settings, um, I hit command, and this is, this is shortcuts. So command uh, apostrophe. No. Oh God, I'm forgetting. Command comma. It's wow. command comma. You can also yeah. just go to, to uh, code code preferences settings. Um, so if you hit command P, is that code? No, what's the, what's the global command shift P? Yeah, there we go. Code, um, or what if I do settings? It's preferences. Yeah. Anyway, okay. I always so my I always do command comma to get here, and then I click this little button up in the top right to open up the JSON file because I don't like using the. I just like to be able to copy JSON stuff because that's what we're going to be doing here. Um. So here. Um. So we want uh, the setting below turns autofix for all providers, including ESLint. Uh, in contrast, this configuration only turns it on for ESLint. Um. You can selectively disable. Okay, so I think we want just that one. Yeah, let's do yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, na, 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 na. Um, okay, editor, code actions on save, fix all. So now this should be enabled. We should be able to open up our application JS. Look, so we've got some red squiggly underlines there. That's a good sign. Yes, that's, that's the it. ESLint plugin saying, hey, there's something wrong here. Um, and now if I do a space and I hit save, ha! It formats it for you. So um, we got some spacing changes there. We got a semicolon at the end. I do have a spicy take on auto format on save. Okay. It is useful. Um, it does speed up your process, but it also, you run the risk of not knowing when you don't know how to do something correctly because it fixes it for you. It's not actually telling you what needs to be fixed. So you're not learning the right way to do something. There's my spicy take. Okay, so it's like a, it's a crutch yeah. in a way. I'm trying to think of something that, to compare this to. It's like a calculator, like member going through school and and they're like, what what's what's 15 times 15 and they're like oh i could just use a calculator no you have to learn how to multiply so that you know how to multiply without a calculator yes um i, I would extend that to like engineering in like the entire engineering profession when you're learning like structural engineering for example you're learning all these long equations and you're learning to do everything by hand to know how it's done um but then when you actually get to a job and it it's all done by computers. Oh well, yeah. You'll like, you'll I'm never gonna use this in real life. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I, I I hear you. Um it's it's good to know. Uh, so so you just mean like it would be nice if when it auto fixed, it would say like this is what I did. Hey dummy, or try this next time. <laughs> this is why I don't write the tools that actually do this for you. <laughs> We need we need an ESLint Kelly like Kelly brand or <laughs> Kelly flavor. Are you ESLint. sure you want to save this file? <laughs> Dumbass. <No. laughs> my my dad will appreciate that that dumbass area. So there's a uh, comment in here. One can argue that spacing the right way is subjective and maybe it's a matter of trying to understand why a project or a certain pattern is used. Yeah, I, I completely agree there. And again, like when it comes to linting, it is opinionated. And so like you can be like, hey, dummy, you need to add a, a semicolon here. Or you could also say the same thing. Hey, dummy, why are you using semicolons? It's entirely your opinion and your prerogative on how you want to actually do something. So I think most, I guess my, my, 
take from here is that it's it's still important to understand like how functions should be written and like what really makes the most sense there. But that is yeah, that is my thought. Awesome. Okay, I'm just writing some junk code here to fix our junk JS file. Uh, oh, no console logs. Uh, what can I do with something? Here, wait, we'll do let something equal false, and then we'll set something to true. Whoa! Something equals true. It's just totally useful. I hope you guys are learning something right now. Something. Uh, something is assigned value. But it's not what? used. You're not actually, it is used. Are, you, are you returning it? Oh, uh, okay, fine. We return it. Maybe I don't need the reassignment. Return it. Well, oh, and you see that? See, it did the little, like, I had let, and then... Yeah. Which is cons. So, that's always a fun a fun uh, understanding. I, first off, ES6, it took me a while to understand how let and const work because I lived in a var world for the longest time. Vars, yeah. Um, but if you are unfamiliar, const is a constant in the sense that it is a variable that never it's not changes. Constantine? It is. I, I'm blanking on other <laughs> things to make jokes just about. Um, whereas let is a variable that can be changed, but there's still uh, a time and place when you use var as well. Um, because let lives within the function itself as opposed to outside of the function. So there's a whole lot that goes into it, but it is, I think we talk about it in one of the Ladybug podcast episodes. So maybe I'll pull that up. Um, yeah, let's do a little demo. Okay, so let here is in a scope. Um, so if I try to do console log what right now, this won't return anything. Um, let me do node... Assets, application JS, uh, there, see, there's nothing. Um, whereas, so const and what are scoped to the curly bracket, basically. So here I'm just creating a scope. This could be a function. I could just have like a function. I could put function before this, um, but I'm just creating a scope here. So what is only available in this scope? Same with let. Constant can't change. Let can change. That's really the only difference there. Uh, whereas if I put this as a var, and now I run, uh, oh, it didn't work. Wait, what's going on? Ah, I, oh, because I'm returning. So, there. so we got something output there, and just to prove that I wasn't crazy with the let and const uh, again. Uh, what there? What is not defined? What is not defined? Oh. What is not defined? What? What? So, what? kind of off topic there, but it's definitely a, a developer related topic. So, uh. I, I mean, yeah, this is like little foundational JavaScript knowledge. Yeah. This is this is useful stuff to to know, um, especially in like job interviews. Don't you find like the more you can just if, whenever yeah, the more you can just go back to like, hey, I know the foundational principles and I know like that this does this because of this. Um, that's, that's, that's helpful. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we have our ESLinting errors fixed. Uh, let's do just another. So our plugin is saying there's no, there's no reds. There's no red squigglies. If I run npm lint JS, see if it passes. Running kind of slow. I don't remember that running kind of slow. Okay, cool. No errors there. So uh, let's commit these changes. Get commit a m x uh, linting errors. Mm. I do. I usually do dash a m. I combine them into one. Uh, see, I'm always. It's like I, I was doing the dash m for you. So I wouldn't open Vim because I'm so used to just running git commit <laughs> dash a and then it opens Vim and then that's my only time that I use Vim and I just write the commit message right there. Of course. Um, I'm stretching, stretching my boundaries. Uh, git push origin tk. There we go. By the way, if you didn't know, if you start typing the uh, the branch name uh, and then hit tab, it autofills for you. If you're running oh my ZSH. Oh my ZSH, which you should be totally running oh my ZSH if you're not already doing so. Yes. Oh my ZSH. My husband installed oh my ZSH on his Mac the other day, and he's not a developer. So handy. I'm very proud of him. Um, cool. So if we go back to here, so we got fixed linting errors. Cool. So these are fixed. 
Um should we uh should we be lint no here let's merge this and we'll 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 go into here let's confirm oh 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 i was going to do this this morning as well just hit try again it'll it, it took me a couple of times but it actually didn't did say merge. there was any merge okay yeah well, there is not that there are merge conflicts it like literally just failed this morning and then i had to yeah try again github's getting flaky yeah come on github Maybe I should start a GitHub discussion about it. <laughs> Do it. Um, oh, that's cool. I didn't know bash. all my bath was a thing. Huh. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't know either. Uh, okay, cool. Let me look at this. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention. Um, okay, so we were talking about different ways of running linting. Um, so we've got the plugin. That's my preferred way of using linting, at least locally. Yeah. Uh, there is something called Husky JS. Which I wanted to at least just uh, give it give it a little name drop. Um, Husky. I yes. like playing the game where you do like a random noun generator and whatever That's word unique. you get, see if there's a JavaScript package for it. But, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, avocado, JS. It totally exists. There has to be an avocado JS. Anyone know? Anyone familiar with avocado JS? Uh, cool. Okay, so. Husky is just a really easy way of assigning tasks, um, command lines to Git uh, events. So the most common way that I've seen this used for linting is you have in your package JSON, or I think you can have a husky.js file. Uh, so once you have this installed in your project, um, you can define every time right before I commit something, uh, run the like run my test suite is what it's it's saying here. Uh, npm test, or in our case, it would be uh, npm run lint, and that would make sure, like that, makes sure that everything is good before you commit. I don't like using this just because there's times where I just want to commit something and get it in the PR and available, and I'll not deal with later. like all the linting errors that I might have. Yeah, kind of gets in the way. Uh, but some people like it. I mean, it exists, and it's a pretty popular. Uh, I mean, I'm sure people are using it just more for more than just linting, but um, it's just I feel like this is a, it's a it's a good thing to to use when you're just learning as well. Yeah, it's another another tool another tool in your toolkit. Yes, you can pull on because maybe there's going to be something else that comes in. I'm trying to think like what's another. Anyone have any ideas of like stuff you'd want to do on Git events? Um, let me see what other events there are. So pre commit, pre push. Um, Husky can also be used to run test suite before Git push. Yeah, that's what they kind of have here. Is that pre push? Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of stuff that doesn't get in the way that like you do it, but it, you could like it wouldn't block you from pushing. Um, is it like post commit? Yeah, probably. So commit not. it and then run it oh, and then yeah, reply okay. to the yeah, comments. True. Oh yeah, I should do that. See, that would be more useful. Let me yeah. commit it. And then after I do the commit, be like, hey, by the way, you've got some linting errors. Yeah. Okay. But all this to say is this is one way, this is kind of like CI. And it's like, so like what we just said there is, is like, let me commit it and then do this thing. Um, this is this is continuous integration. Um Kelly, what's 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 continuous integration? What's what's CI? Let's, let's oh God, you want me to define it? I mean, just what? Uh, sure, yes, define it. Uh, Web, Miriam Webster uh, definition. Okay, you don't want me to come up with one. Okay, perfect. No, that no, I, I can, do. I do be... want you to come up, with, but you you never make mistakes. So give me the. <laughs> <laughs> that is a. I don't even know how I would. Do. Continuous integration is a development practice where developers integrate code into a shared repository frequently, preferably several times a day. Um, I can go on reading a definition. Blah, 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 but, blah, blah. Um, what we're really talking about here is with GitHub in particular, utilizing GitHub actions to build in some of these continuous mm -hmm. integration kind of tools. Um, and GitHub actions, is, so on that, following that lovely definition. Mm -hmm. um, continuous integration is basically like, do run some code, like run some scripts, run these command lines at this particular event. Yeah. Um, 
So like when I push code to get like, and, and it's used and, and what we're going to be talking about is using continuous integration in conjunction with your GitHub repo. So it's on things like when I push code to my GitHub repo or like a new commit, or when I open a PR or when I like, uh, it's basically you anything, PR, yeah. uh, GitHub webhooks. Um, basically anything that's defined here events um oh, event payloads where's the actual list of events na, 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 na. Overview. That's creating webhooks it might be they might list in there um sending the basics of webhooks um you know what here wait i got another one uh github action events there we go so I can while while he's pulling that up, I can say how <gasps> how we use it at the tap room. Uh oh. Oh um, no, GitHub is really flaky today. <laughs> Whoa. So we have a GitHub action that triggers a Slack message in a channel called pull requests when one of our developers opens a pull request. And because this is because we require code reviews for each of our uh, PRs, so we're not just submitting anything. Um, that might result in some errors. And it, it's really helpful for, especially for our newer devs to have that extra extra set of eyes on the on the work. Um, so we have a GitHub action that alerts the channel when that has created or been a pull request has been created. We also have one when a comment has been left, uh, changes were requested, or a, a, I think we have one for approved as well. Maybe not approved, but we have one for changes and requested, which results in like a very sad face message, like your pull request was declined. And I love it. It's a little brutal. Um, and, and, yeah, and that's but like I think to your point though, this is it's set up in a way that you can just like create these tasks as you need them. Yeah. It's like instead of me doing this comment manually and like to the point of of like ESLint remembering to format your code all this way, it just automates something else. Automate this task that you always have to do after you. Um, commit code or after you open a PR. Uh, uh, so yeah. the docs are all down. Um, I let's found, just, uh... <laughs> I'm going to actually pull, put a link in chat as well. Um, there's actually okay. a marketplace for, for GitHub Actions. Yeah. Uh, so you can see what all exists out there. So one example that's in the marketplace is Vercel. Um, so if you're deploying a site to Vercel, uh, basically the way the action works is when you uh, commit a uh, some code or you open a pull request it automatically generates a deploy preview so you can share that as needed um here we go um okay i'm just opening up i'm i will talk about actions in the context of an action that we uh, are going to push how about that um actually here yeah let me just pull in latest changes get pull origin main Rebase. Oh, got to release changes. So, um, GitHub Actions live inside the .github folder and uh, workflows. And actually, so this is some terminology, um, and this is something I've been just recently becoming more familiar with. Workflows are conveniently they live in the workflows folder. <laughs> uh, workflows are are basically a list of GitHub actions. So even though you hit, let's go back here, even though you hit the actions tab, these actions live in your repo as workflows. And actions are the things like Kelly mentioned or like Kelly linked to are things that live in say the marketplace actions are like the individual tasks uh, or jobs actually if you were if i go back um here so this is uh here jobs so we've got jobs um or i guess it's kind of like a step i guess actions are like a step yeah um i'm saying this because in if you want to create a github action it looks very different than um creating like a workflow. So all of these actions that are available in the marketplace live inside a repo. Um, and we can, let's just visit one of these repos. Uh, Google GitHub Actions. So if you want to create an action, 
it lives, it's its own repo, um, and it needs an action.yaml file right here. And this basically specifies everything. Like, what is this action? What file do I need to go to? What version of Node does it use? For some reason, GitHub does not allow you to use Node 14. So huh. um, uh, can't use top-level await. One day, everything will support top-level await. I guess I have I have, I'm a, I have a shtick about that. Well, Here's a question for wait. you. What will be yeah. released first? GitHub supporting Node 14 or sections everywhere? <laughs> I, actually, I think Node Sing. 14, you can run it in Node 14 if you, uh, instead of, so when you create an action, it can be a JavaScript action or it can be a Docker action. Um, so Docker is like basically this action boots up an entire container and the code just runs in that container. And at that point, this Docker, this container can be can have whatever you want inside of it. Um, so you could, this could be Node 14. It's just not as nice to, um, oh no, I don't want to click that. It's just, yeah, it's a different way of creating this action. Um, um, while we're doing this, um, yeah. if any of you in the chat have any questions, thoughts, comments, you are all being very quiet. Yeah, what's going on? That was, uh, we can take a pause here. Um, that was that was one of the things I really enjoyed the most about last week was I don't I guess it like just opening up the floor a bit more. Maybe yeah. it, it means like I talk less or we 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 ask people more to like, hey, what's going on? Um I, I totally totally in line with what Kelly is saying there. Um the whole point of this is to is to engage with you guys. Uh what questions do you have? Uh, what experiences do you have with GitHub Actions, if any? Yeah. Um, I do. What other love... CI services do you like to use? Uh, I've used a few yeah. others in my in my past. What's what's because GitHub Actions are pretty new. It's yeah. been like what a year or so that they've been out. Not even. Yeah, it's it. They're very new. Um, so, like, have you used like Circle CI? Or Circle like CI, yeah, CI. that was the first one that I read. That that was my like, yeah, that was my first continuous integration service experience. Um, now Shopify's gone to. I mean, we have our own internal CI uh, pipeline for internal projects, um, but if it's open source, then you'll see in all of Shopify's open source projects is the Travis. Use Travis. Uh, YAML, okay. Travis CI. Um, stuff like this, we are still being exposed to new things, so it's hard to come up with actual questions, in my opinion. Okay, fair enough, King. Yeah. Well, if, if it's new and it's something you don't understand, then then ask a question about that. But otherwise, uh, yeah, happy you're, happy you're paying attention, can King. Can I ask a dumb <laughs> question to the people in the chat? Yes, I can, because I am talking. Can you answer <laughs> your own question? Yes, I cannot. you can. not. <laughs> um, so I am very new to Twitch and I see some of you have icons next to your name. Like, can, is that like a, like something you can set custom or does it mean something is it like it's connected to you running a stream or. It's, it's, it's like special. It's, it's, it's special. You said, I think you said in your account, um, and like, it looks like King's symbol. The fact that it says 2019 makes me think it's, it's like a limited time icon that like oh you can hover over it oh yeah i see okay and it's, have... it's so this is like back in the day because this is the last time i actually did anything like this is that this is like earning trophies or badges on yeah bets. i think they're called badges right oh right, i earned some of these on on peloton on their app okay not that it shows up in chat because there's no chat but okay now now they're like limited edition events yeah, Peloton's on Twitch? No. Oh. <laughs> no, it's completely like... no. I'm just like the badge concept. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was like, wow, Peloton's that really good at their offerings. Like, actually Peloton. doing like live streaming, like, because they do live stream workouts, but yeah, it's well, Peloton app. They have their own server. Like, they have their own Twitch, yeah. basically. I was like, Crown is Twitch Prime. Okay. Got it. Oh, okay. So that's uh, my right. husband. Which is why, has like, paper Prime, so he has it. Uh, but yeah, I do not. Shopify Devs has Prime. Oh, wait, I thought we had a crown. Oh, no, it's because we're admin You're a here that shows that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I have nothing. I am just you have nothing. Haguna Matata has prime. There so I'm loving the name Haguna Matata. So I yeah. 
absolutely love Lion King down to the point where my license plate is Mufasa. Nice. <laughs> I when I was closing on my house, I will never forget this because it's showing up in my memories now at this point. But uh, I was getting, I was stopping for some lunch before closing on my house, and a guy walks up to me and he's like, "Aren't you a little old to have a Lion King license plate?" No. Do you want to pay for my car? No. Then I'll do whatever I want. <laughs> Um, continue by all means i'm gonna um i'm gonna push uh our github action uh branch because this should be working cool um oh yeah i guess i'll i'll quickly just okay so we've got uh we've got a github workflow lint.yaml so this is a workflow that we want to push uh calling it i mean i should change this um name lint all the things uh so we want to run this whenever we push codes and pull we don't that's kind of redundant we don't need it to do on pull request um so this runs whenever we push code actually i'm going to keep the pull request just because i don't want to change things live um jobs build this is just a name so we can call this jobs lint uh this is all kind of boilerplate stuff so right here we're checking out our repo base this is like Okay, what's the steps you want to run? Check out your repo, um, set up with Node, v14, npm ci. I don't know if this is actually. Can you run npm ci? Just hold on. Let me. I've only seen it in their docs, and I'm assuming it's something that's specific to actions. That oh is God, a good question. Work. What is npm ci? Does anyone know what npm ci is? Removing existing no mm. okay. This is something new. Hold on. I want to look what this what this is. Because they mentioned this in their actions docs, and I thought, oh, this is just like a special GitHub Actions install command. They say it's faster um, than using npm install, so you use npm CI. Um, but it's actually an npm thing. Huh. Let's see what this is. Install a project with a clean slate. Um This command is, is similar to npm install, except it's meant to be used in automated environments such as test platforms uh, or any situation where you want to make sure you're doing a clean install of your dependencies. It can be significantly faster than npm install by skipping certain user-oriented features. Uh, it is also more strict. Oh, okay, cool. So it's like as an npm install built for CI. Thus, it's called CI. Yeah. NPM CI. Cool. Okay. There, I learned something new today. Hooray. Yay. Um, okay, npm ci, and then we're running our npm lint js command. Cool. Any questions? Cool. Um, so, it's uh, push origin. Cool. Oh, I didn't commit my, hold on. Git commit a end. Uh, right here, I'm just amending my commit because I forgot I'd made those little few changes to the lint YAML. Uh, get push. Add lint action. Uh, so I'm force pushing, but I forget the. I'm not using the dash f. I'm using the plus because there's something safer about it. I can't remember. It's just like best practice. Use the plus. Huh. Um. That I did not know. <laughs> Uh, we could look up the details on that. I remember there was something like it's it's a safer force push, and I forget the particular. I, it was explained to me. I can't remember. Um, okay, pull request. Uh, that's not our repo. Shop it points. Here we go. Pull request. Um, dun, 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 dun. So let's open up a pull request here. Add land workflow. Create pull request. We have really good pull request descriptions here. You know, super helpful for anyone that wants to uh, follow along. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. Here we go. So um, here are our actions in progress. So we have lint all the things, and this is what this is what I suspected. We didn't need both. Uh, so this is just running it twice actually, uh, yeah. because we opened a PR, so it's running this action on pull request and we also push new code or like we pushed our commit that's so running it there 
Um, so, so click on details for the one that passed. Yeah. We go to details. Uh, so we are now in, oh, I thought it would take us to the actions tab, but oh, it's in the context of the yeah, PR. Yeah, that's oh, cool. Oh, forget it. Okay, cool. Um, so we're still in our PR here and we have our task. Uh, here's our lint. So here's all the steps that it was taking that I was describing, like setting up a node, running NPM CI, running NPM lint. So if you run that, uh, you'll see here. So it just runs NPM run lint and you can see ES lint, lint all the files and there were no errors output. Um, so if, if I were, um, should I, no. If you have linting errors, then there will be errors thrown here. I was and actually going to suggest this... you do that just so you can see what it looks like when it fails. Yeah. Okay, let's do all it. right. So CI is mostly for linting testing, right? Because I usually work on all my projects alone or run my tests on devices. So I have pretty much no actual experience in it, even though I've been writing code and deploying to prod on Fridays for like 10 years now. Um, <laughs> other uses for CI. Um, okay. So this is one thing. Uh, uh, there's, uh, so the, the con, especially like outside of themes, um, a really common use case for CI is deployment, uh, deployment to a staging environment, deploy deployment to production, uh, though you typically want to do production deployments manually. Yeah. Um, but this is well, what we were talking about creating a whole GitHub action to, uh, create a new theme push the theme or push all the code to the theme, deploy it, and then grab the, uh, the preview URL for you. Yeah. So this is, um, there is a way with Shopify's current APIs, uh, that you could have us, what Kelly was just saying, a GitHub action that essentially, uh, you have it, you have everything authenticated, like a private API key that you can just, uh, take this PR, push the contents of this PR of the theme, um, in this PR to your dev store, create a theme, and now you have a previewable link. Uh, and actually before, okay, wait, let me just, I'm talking and trying to code at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, make a- uh, Last time thing. I did that, I tried to write a commit message that made literally no sense. So I try not to do that anymore. Um, and I will, there is actually a GitHub action to do what we just described, um, which, can you look for, if you just search Shopify in the uh, marketplace, mm -hmm. um, you can post a link there. It's going to, it's, it's the most popular. I think there's like 50 likes on it. Nice. Um, cool. So here, so I just pushed uh, make a linting error, uh, commit to our workflow. So it's running, uh, let's look at it as it goes, just so. So I here, oh yeah, there we go. One. I'm in the, I'm in the, uh, what am I looking for? Um, oh, maybe it was an app. Uh, there was a, no, there was a preview. There was a preview link at here. We'll, we'll, we'll look forward to it. I see somebody else's Shopify uh, theme deploy previews, but it has one star. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe that was, maybe that was it. Um, but it would still work. Okay. So here, um, so uh, for just so we can wrap this little little bit up, uh, so we pushed our linting error, and as you can see here in our CI, da -ba, we have an error, and we have an X here, and now our whole make linting uh, or no lint all the things task has an X on it, um, and you can see here in our PR it has an X on it. It's basically saying hey, there's uh, errors, and right now I could merge this still. But there is a way in settings that you can set it up um, so that you can't merge. Block merging, yeah. Unless yeah, you can block um, branch. Actually, that might even be um, a setting branch to protection. not allow admin override. Um, branch name pattern. I think if I just do leave it there. I think if you leave it blank, uh, it captures everything, yeah. Require pull request reviews. Require status checks to pass. Here we go. Yeah. Um, so we can do lint. And required. then there's there's at the bottom include administrator. So you can oh. actually force yourself to be included on that. Oh, okay. Let me go back. Um, include administrators. Cool. Uh, uh, one password for the win. Mm -hmm. Name can't be blank. Uh, 
Ball? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the turtles again. Yeah. All right, status checks. Sent. Create. Da, da, da. There we go. Cool. So now, if we go to our lint workflow, there we go. Um, required required status must pass before merging. So you can see here, I can't click this button. If you could see my finger right now, I'm furiously clicking on this merge pull request button. But we can hear it. it. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so that's a great way uh, so, of setting the bar for quality on your repo, basically. Yeah. It's like you can push any code you want and people can open commit uh, like pull requests on your repo. Um, however, however they want, but unless it passes these checks, um, it's yeah. not going to be merged in. So I think another do your example homework. of the checks would be um, you have to like sign, especially for open source projects, like you have to sign off on how, how things need to be done in order to actually uh, like have your merge, your pull requests passed. Um, yeah. The reviews. It, but yeah. There is a, uh, here, wait, um, let's, let's do that. I like it. So Shopify has that, that, um, it, I mean, it's depending on the project, but if you're merging into like Shopify core, the main Shopify repo that Shopify lives on, uh, you need at least, um, two reviews from coworkers, Yeah. which is just like a nice, uh, here, here you go. Require pull request reviews for merging. So we do one we do review. One, so, um, so save changes. And I'm going to ask you for a review, Kelly. Ooh, okay. Um, here, wait, let me just, let me fix the, let me commit my fix so that we have that passing. Commit. Okay. Excellent. No. Oh. Okay. Um. What's that? Protection branch failed. Oh, we, we broke something. What'd you do? Protective branch hook declined. Uh, required. No. We are at time now, so maybe we can. Yeah. We can fix okay, this. whatever. Yeah. Anyway, we, we talked about it. We cool. talked about it. Exactly. We talked about it. Let me uh, switch this back to just the two of us. There we go. <laughs> there. Um, do we have any last questions that we should uh, we should answer? I refollowing the chat for that last few minutes just before we sign off. No. Yes. No. No questions. I know there's no a little questions. delay, but um, even still, what are we going to talk about? We have we have another one scheduled for next week. We do. We we're doing like a little. I, I mean, unintentional experiment here, but um, it will, it's an experiment nonetheless. Um, oh, there's one question. Um. Hold on, let's, let's answer your question first. What are we doing next week? Um, Kelly, you mentioned Vue. You you got some things working in Vue. Yes, uh, let's hold off on that one until 2021, like okay. January. I need a little bit more time. Okay. We could just do an AMA as well. We could. We could do half and half. Yeah. Um, we can open up the floor, like we could have a following our what's new segment or we can, uh, yeah, maybe that would be a good, like, maybe that would get people asking or like feeling like they can chat more throughout the rest of the, the, the stream. Like yeah. if we have like a little 15 minutes AMA and then, um, there's view, um, there is. So a, a, a coworker of mine, continuing on the linting bandwagon, a coworker of mine is is uh, prototyping out a liquid linter. Oh, uh, that sounds great. Which is really cool. And he made the most amazing video to uh, to like share it. Huh. Uh, it was. Do you, do you know Power Thirst? Uh, the like. Here, wait. Um, while you're pulling that up, I'm going to, I'm going to start yeah. answering some of these questions. So oh, yeah, what's the Git it. workflow you use when developing slash working on a theme? Do you use a staging theme to where you merge all the PRs and only publish the current slash live theme when a new tag is generated? So that's a very good question. Um, on a past uh, episode on here, we talked about my build process uh, that we use at the tap room. And I think that's going to be a really, a really good resource for how we do it. I also have our entire build process public. 
So you can you can kind of follow along with how we work. But basically, each developer has their own theme, uh, unpublished theme, of course, that is labeled as dev and then their initials. Whenever we're about to do something for staging, we we duplicate the live theme. We rename it to version it to the next incremental version, whatever it is for bug fixes or new feature or whole overhaul, of course. Um, push that up to, that's our staging branch essentially, have the client sign off on that specific uh, theme, and then we publish that one once we're ready. So if you go back um, two streams ago on YouTube, uh, if you go to Shopify Devs on YouTube, you can look at our videos. Uh, it would be uh, work, no, it was uh, versioning and linting. Yeah, it was, yeah. we called it versioning and linting. Kelly goes through full walkthrough of, of the process that she, she does for kind of the staging. Um, final question, just because I see King asks, um, will there ever be staging environment for Shopify stores? So last stream, I mentioned that we were for hack days playing around with this kind of Git integration. Um, this idea that like your store could live as a, a repo, um, in that like pages and products and all this stuff can be kind of like exported to a repo. Anyway, this whole concept of, I think being able to make a clone or having like a, an, a reliable export, uh, export import of a store so that you could basically duplicate it and create a dev store that is a duplicate, uh, is, is, is something is something that we're playing around with. Um, so no promises on on when or how, but it's something we're aware of, and it's a uh, yeah. So stay tuned. Twenty twenty one is looking looking like it's going to be fun. Yeah, uh, King. If we're going to be doing an AMA for the next one, that's a really good question to ask during that because it's going to take much longer for me to actually explain my answer for the two to three questions I'll absolutely need to know. Very good question though. Um, in terms of my build process supporting clients that may use other freelancers for modifications, uh, we have basically a process. We use Basecamp for project management where we have a specific thread that's set up for theme changes that were not made by our team. And the client just tells us when a certain file changed and we pull that down uh, into our build process. If they're gonna be more involved on the you know developments, which we try to avoid, um, but they, if they are going to be, we actually just add them to that specific project as well. So we teach them our, our flow and our, uh, our build process. Cool. Sounds like, a, sounds like another, I'm hearing, uh, I'm hearing approvals for another AMA. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I think we could do something cool like AMA and then spruce it up with little like subjects that we, that we like, once the AMA goes stale, we can be like, oh, well, like, have you guys thought of this? And then we can like introduce a little, little segment, little topic. And then hopefully maybe that can bring some more questions. Anyway, yeah, that's great. Cool. Idea. Ideas. This is so every after every stream, Kelly and I end it and we're like, oh, we should do this next time and we should totally do this. And so maybe we're doing it publicly. This time. <laughs> that's okay. Um, okay. But I'm going to bring in my groceries from outside now. So, okay. <laughs> I think I heard a doorbell on my end too. So I have a delivery outside. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank you for joining, Kelly. Thank you for joining, audience. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Next we'll, week. Uh, we'll see you all next week. But AMA next week slash at regular time wednesday 1 p.m we'll, we'll try to keep the 1 p.m uh this week uh we had another stream there is actually another stream if you guys want to stay until 1 p.m uh where we're talking about uh sorry I'm blanking um we're talking about duties ah. duties live stream uh 